Good evening and welcome to the April 13th, 2021 Finance Subcommittee of the Brockton School Committee. And if just a minute ago. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access. Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98 and 1071 HD uh, version as well. Um, the public can access this meeting link, or this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton Channels. I'll call the roll to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. D'Agostino is here. Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Yeah. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. Okay, we are a quorum. Our agenda tonight is, is short. Uh, FY 2022 school department budget and then any other business that needs to come before finance. And uh, I will uh, turn the floor over to the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. Aldo, do you wanna... Um Give an overview and any updates on any news from um, the state. Sure. The, the House is meeting. We should hopefully by the end of this week hear something um, on where they stand. Um, the little rumblings I've heard is that maybe they'll increase our funding a little bit. So we'll, whether it happens in the House, whether it happens in the Senate, but they're looking to see if they can not only take care of us, but they're looking to take care of some other communities that didn't fare so well in the Student Opportunity Act. So um, we continue to balance out this year our, our funds and make all the purchases that we need to carry us forward through next year to continue with the, um, with the COVID um, protocols we have in place. So we're getting everything ready for that. And with that now, what we're really looking at, the superintendent, is how to re-staff our overall org structure to get back to the business we were in before the state started cutting us 10 years ago. You know, they, they, they don't want to say, but we know, as funding was cut, you know, our scores went down. So now that we're putting everything back in place and hopefully the money continues, we'll build that back up. All right, so tonight's round um, is um, pretty much, it's almost like building level uh, leadership. There's a couple of positions that will be um, spread throughout. Um, actually, th there's um, three positions that would be district-wide, um, but we'll start with um, the Barrett Russell principal uh, as you know, Principal Camillo is serving two roles. Um, she is now the principal of the Kennedy School. She was appointed um, last summer, obviously, in the untimely tragic death of Brian Rogan. Um, and so because we knew we were starting the year fully remote and we stayed fully remote, um, we saved that money. Um, uh, so Joanne has served uh, both roles as the Barrett Russell principal and the Kennedy School principal. Uh, um, saving us um, at the time um, at least three positions from layoffs last year, and now it's time for uh, to allow next September for Joanne to be the principal at the um, at the Kennedy, which is obviously a big job, and uh, add a principal back to the Barrett Russell. And then um, the Edison Academy needs a principal. It is a Chapter 70 school right now. Dr. Cobbs serves in that role, but also, as you know, is the executive director of operations, he would move into the executor, executive director of operations full time uh, and we would advertise the Edison Academy principal's job. Um, and then these next positions come directly f as recommendations from our district review, but also um, we really didn't need recommendations from the district review. We actually knew that we were short in these areas um, and desperately need help, especially in the area of teaching and learning. Um, so we would put back uh, which we did want, didn't, 
want to cut in the first place years ago was the associate principal at Brockton High School, um, a position that has been identified by uh, the state as a position that um, they recommend highly to come back, but I recommend highly to come. I, I worked under the associate principal in my 10 years at Brockton High School. Um, they really moved the work in the area of curriculum and in teaching and learning, and um, you know, Dr. Murray and, and Sharon Wolder before him um, had to do that work without an associate that was cut, um, and it, it's really an important position that needs to come back. Um, and then North Middle School is adding uh, they're uh, another sixth grade, so they'll have sixth and seventh grade. They do not currently have an associate principal. All other middle schools do. Um, and so we would add uh, uh, an associate principal to, um, to North as they enter, you know, as they welcome another grade in. And then teaching and learning. Um, and again, all of these are connected, obviously, to teaching and learning. But uh, we would bring, bring back curriculum coordinators uh, in the area of ELA and math six to eight um, to work directly with the Office of Teaching and Learning. Um, and those positions were cut, I want to say, four years ago. And um, the associate principals who are supposed to be assigned to the middle schools, and they have done an amazing job filling in as content leads uh, for very little money. Um, but they have done a great job overseeing um, curriculum in each of the different contents um, in the four major subjects. Uh, but they're supposed to be associate principals <laughs> at their middle schools. And as you know, um, our middle schools, um, there are middle schools in turnaround, um, north, east, west, south, um, are all in turnaround. And um, I don't think I'm, Plouffe is also in turnaround. And so it's important that those uh, associate principals Pluff does not have an associate principal. They have the IB coordinator. Um, so that's not changing at this time. But the associate principals need to be in their schools, working with their teachers, working with their principal, their leadership teams, the assistant principals, focused on, w focused on their school. Um, right now, they're focused on a lot. They're not only their school, but also district-wide. Uh, at all middle schools, they work on, again, content. And again, they've done an amazing job. Um, and but it's time to put structures in place. And now this doesn't solve everything. And right now this is just for ELA and math. N you know, next year I'd look to add science and social studies. But again, this is a build back, um, and we want to see where funding is next year. But these are the two positions um, I recommend this year. Um, and then bilingual. The bilingual department has been without a department head. Um, for, I want to say, almost five years now, it was cut. Um, as you know, we have several um, of our students, uh, English language learners, uh, and the bilingual department is short, uh, and they have been without that department. And I, it may be about four or five years, but uh, a, a position that's des desperately needi needed, and that would be K to eight. Um, June, are you with us? I am here, yes. Just want to jump in and talk about the curriculum coordinators. Yeah, I think that um, you summed it up really well, Mike, because Superintendent Thomas, um, when I think about it, we are launching two major curriculum resources. Um, you heard about one of them a couple of weeks ago around study sync when Eileen McQuaid was here to talk about the curriculum that we we're adopting for six to eight uh, ELA. We also just this past year we launched the uh, Carnegie Math Solutions Program for six to eight. And so thinking about having ongoing support for those two major content areas is critically important. And I echo what the superintendent said around the work the content leads have done. It's been immeasurable um, in the past few years, despite the challenges we've had, we've been able to launch content in every one of the major um, curriculum content areas for middle school. And so having that district level support to support the ongoing support for the schools, I think is gonna be critical to the successful launch of, of this resource. Um, and in particular, I'm talking about study sync right now, but at the same time, I'm talking about Carnegie Math Solutions because we launched that this year, but we launched it virtually. And so thinking ahead to next year where we know we're going to have our kids in front of us, 
we, we just really believe it's going to be um, really critical that we have that district level support for um, really supporting the teachers well in the implementation of these resources. And so we're excited to be able to talk about these positions. And I know that the superintendent plans to talk to you more about other positions that will really help us as a district to put in the infrastructure that the district review has recognized as being important for any of the curriculum initiatives that, that we're looking to implement as a school district. Any questions for June or anything about those positions? Because we also have Dr. Murray with us. Um, Dr. Murray, could you just talk about the need uh, at Brockton High School? Again, I, I expressed it because I spent years up there under, uh, you know. Um, oh, yes, I mean, we have a teaching staff of over 300. We've had a lot of turnaround, turnover. But as you can imagine, um, it's each department head has, uh, you know, approximately in, in the core subject areas over 40 teachers. So for us to ensure and to address the concerns about the quality and the, the depth of instruction, I think a, another set of eyes that can focus solely on that. The building is, uh, is large enough to kind of draw one's attention as, a, as the manager of it. So I think a, uh, somebody that's sole focus is really on uh, teaching and learning is uh, something that the state recognized we need. And I think the staff has made it very clear when they were interviewed and in surveys that they, they uh, relish the idea of the return of an associate principal. So something that's uh, certainly uh, much needed at Brock and I. And again, I was there 10 years and worked for very powerful associate principals. Sue Zakowitz was the first associate at Brockton High School. I worked for Sue before she became superintendent. And then Maria LaFort followed her. And then Sharon Wolder followed Maria. So again, three very powerful and excellent associate principals and administrators that you know really um, drove the work around te teaching and learning at, at the high school. And um, you know, it's, I, I feel strongly about these positions. Um, just, to, just to be clear about them, the, obviously the Barrett Russell and Edison Academy those are non-union positions. Uh, Brockton High School associate principal is non-union. Um, North Middle School associate principal is union. Uh, curriculum coordinators, their union positions as well, BEA, and then um, the bilingual department head is also a BEA position. So um, that's where we are. Um, that's tonight's um, you know, information of positions we need. Um, when we come for our last and final round, um, we'll focus on a few uh, district-wide non-union positions at Central um, that are important to bring back, but also we'll be looking at uh, programs. We want to look at our music programs, our athletic programs. We'll be coming in with suggestions of programs to add uh, at our middle schools um, as far as athletics uh, um, and also our music program. We're looking to do different things, K, K through 12. Um, which are after school programs, tutoring programs. Uh, so we'll, next week we'll come with some administrative positions at Central, but also programs that we feel should be in place for students and adding to some athletic programs as well. Excellent. And that will be our last round, right? Ella, what's in, that? Oh, two weeks. two weeks. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not here next week. You're right. <laughs> two weeks from, from tonight. Okay. All right. And then, um, yeah, that'll pretty much bring us to the, to the end. And... Um, so good, although you know, you made an interesting point at the beginning and I, I think it's worth um, repeating, you know, when we were dealing with having to cut so many positions and we were in the tough position of where do we cut it? Do we, if, I mean, we cut classroom positions, paras and teachers, you know, substantially, had we gone deeper there, now we've got 35, 40 kids in a class. Huh. If we, and then, so you don't wanna do that and then we cut all of these types of PD and curriculum support positions, and so now the teachers don't have what they need. I mean, it was really, there was no win, you know. Um, no matter where we went, I mean, there was... There, it, exactly. It was, it, was, it was beyond devastating when you look at the amount of money. You know, we, at the, when, the very first year, we lost $16 million. And this year, we're getting back 18, but it's right. also seven years later. Right. So we're really starting back over where we were. Right. 
Yeah, I always say this. I mean, it was an eight-year period. You had a, this. The committee had to cut seventy million dollars out of the yeah. budget. Seventy million. It was, and you always had made decisions based on the closest to the classroom. Right. That's what you tried to protect, the closest positions that worked with kids every day in the classroom. So that's what happened, and that's why you lose you know, administrative positions. Um, you lose programs. Right. Uh, you cut technology, curriculum, and, again, this is right. a build back, and if the <coughs> budget continues to stay and they still continue to fund the SOA, then, again, this is a build back. It's, it has to be a process. It has to be methodical because – we don't want you know you just can't add everything back in one year even though no. we want to but you can't and you have to make sure it's sustainable as we move right through. we don't want to be laying people off no we don't want to you're right we don't want to assume that we get continue this funding continues to come and then next year like you said we're back in the position of laying people off that's i think you know what you've presented to us so far is fiscally responsible being conservative because again we don't know what's coming around the corner a year from now with with COVID and with uh, it just SOA funding, and there's just a lot of question marks. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so no, and I, I also you mentioned the superintendent, but I want to make sure we recognize and thank you know, and and this is only a few people. I know there are more people than this doing two and three and four jobs, but you mentioned a few, and I, I just wanted to reiterate our appreciation. And if if you don't get named, that doesn't mean we don't appreciate. We, we absolutely do. We know people are doing a ton of extra work, but you know, you have Joanne Camillo, principal of two different schools. Um, you know, Dr. Cobb's wearing I don't know how many hats at this point. Um, you know, and, and you talked about, you know, Dr. Murray and Sharon Wolder without an associate here in the high school, 4,200 kid uh, student school. Um, you know, it, it just, it, yeah. It, and, and then you yourself taking on, you know, I mean, you don't have a deputy. And I know there's people in your administration that are doing more and you're doing more. And, and so, you know, again, to try and make things work in the past but um so um you know but we were in the position of doing everything we could to protect the classroom as best we could and um, i, I want to thank again it's 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 important to note that um the bea has been very flexible because it, it um you have um the associate principals for um example our bea members so the bea had to agree to allow them to be content leads so not only work in their buildings with their principals but also work district wide with all the middle school teachers in their content area and that you know the, you know kim and the ba had agreed to that and and again they they didn't shy away from all that extra work either and and so everybody did what they had to do um right. and and to pick up the slack and to just cover for things we had to cut and that's the way we do it in brockton but now with money it's refreshing to people to go back and focus on the jobs that they're hired to do so we can do those well uh, and support teachers and you know really support the curriculum and have strong professional development uh, and start moving the work to improve uh, results for students yeah no you're right it's good to finally be in a position to put in place what we already knew was needed we didn't need the district review to tell us this we knew um, but at any rate all right, so I do want to make sure if every, any member of the committee would like to uh, comment or have questions. Nobody? I just, I just wanted to echo um, what uh, Mr. D'Agostino and our superintendent um, just mentioned. For some of the new school committee members, you know, I know when we first came onto the school committee for the first, I think, four years, we were constantly in the red, and we were making decisions, I mean, we were cutting so many things even down to, I think it was a subscription uh, for, for one, of the, one of the programs and we're like, $300, $300. So, and I'm really, really proud of our BPS family because the one thing that just echoed throughout all those years is we will make it work. We will make it work because we knew we would get to a certain point where we would have funding eventually. Um, so right now it's, it's, it's a little surreal sitting here and looking at positions last week and now thinking what we went through for those first four years for I mean that was my first time on the committee and um, you know we, we joined the four new new school committee members at the time and it was just you know every every year it seemed like they were cutting more and um, so it, it is nice to be able to slowly bring back some of these positions I agree with our superintendent and with with Mr. D'Agostino we just, you know, we, we got to 
be very, very selective as to what we do because we do need to hold on to what money we do have. Next year is not a guarantee. So um, we are very fortunate this year. So, and I do want to thank all our BPS family um, for, for getting us to this point because without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, a lot of people were wearing many hats for, for the past few years. So again, we don't want that to go unnoticed. We, we notice that and we do appreciate it. So hopefully now we're able to slowly help you, bring you that help that you need, um, you know, get that help in our classrooms. So I just want to say thank you. You know, it's just a lot of people don't realize the behind the scenes, what goes into these meetings um, and how tough it is sometimes to have to cut a program or to, or to have to, we just can't afford it. So teachers in our classrooms is top priority and now we're able to slowly bring back some of the other support um, positions. So hopefully next year we'll, we'll be in same position to be able to keep bringing back and mm -hmm. being very competitive with our surrounding towns and cities. But that's it, I just wanted to say thank you. And we did receive some news um, coming out of the House and Senate that it looks like they've committed to fund the SOA over six years and not seven. So let's hope, I mean, that ha official word hasn't come out yet, but that's all indications that this, I might get in more information tomorrow. Uh, there's a, a call with our superintendents with Commissioner Riley, so we should maybe get some information about uh, where we are with uh, SOA going forward, but also with, um, we still don't know about the ESSER 3, is it called, Aldo? Exactly, ESSER 3. Yeah. Um, so we're waiting for that, that number. Well, the well. ESSER, actually, the ESSER 3 is, I think, what they're calling the 35.6 million the city's getting. But there's going to be an addition to that. They'll be directly to schools. Yeah, this is, this, that's the 35 million is separate. That's the city. And then there's money coming again through Title I that is directed uh, right at school. So we don't know that number yet. And Hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, we will. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, any, yeah. <clears throat> okay. any other members of the committee have a comment, question? Okay. Then I guess we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is other business. Is there any other business to come before finance this evening? Uh, again, I'll just prep the committee. As we, again, we'll look to next week. We'll really look at uh, two weeks. We'll look at programs. Um, and you know we're really looking to uh, beef back up our, our extracurricular activities for kids. Okay. Also, our tutoring for for students that are, are struggling. Uh, what we're going to offer. We'll look for grants for um, vacation school and after school academic programs as we build and start to help kids recover. But it's also important to know when you're helping students recover from the COVID slide that you need to provide them with fun things to do. So. Um, we're looking at, you know, making sure the middle school sports program is, is back to where it was before. Um, we're looking at adding football at middle school, um, and we'll bring that to you as well. So, um, and, and so there's a lot we want to make sure we offer for kids who are able to not only obviously get what they meet their academic needs, but also some really fun things um, in the area of extracurricular activities, you know, book clubs, after school clubs, uh, drama. Uh, music and athletics and we'll bring that to you in two weeks because those things are obviously important for the social emotional well-being of students so you know I look the, forward to that as well the the extracurriculars are equally as important too I mean I, if if you want to <laughs> um, you know uh, Vinnie Macrina several times made his opinion very known to me and we had a, we had a couple of conversations about it when you look at the students who are involved in extracurricular activities, generally, they also do well academically. You know, I mean, and I think there's there's a clear reason for that. And I, you know, um, you know, it, it makes sense to bring those opportunities back and keep them engaged with their school and with their community. Go ahead. Um, this week, the mayor um, met our net school spending by giving us 10.2 million to bring us back to where we are. But he also added 100, an additional hundred thousand dollars. And it's earmarked for these programs, so um, that's that'll cover us from now until you know, June 30th, and then uh, we begin our budget. And in our budget is going to be programs going forward all through the summer. Just, Mr. Vice Chairman, just to yeah, follow please. up on that. So on the amended budget, again, it was the you know over 10 million, um, and then I made a concerted effort for 100,000 dollars 
as Aldo just said, for the school side. In addition, I uh, have 100,000 earmarked for youth uh, endeavors on the city side as well. This is for the current fiscal year. We're not even talking about the next fiscal year. So, um, you know, we have the money. We're going to utilize the money uh, and help the boys and girls in the city of Brockton. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up and making that commitment, which we all know is so important. And again, where kids have missed out on so much of that social interaction with each other, and that's so important for kids that are, uh, uh, you know, especially in the in the younger grades as they're developing. But even, you know, at all levels, it's it's vitally important. So, thank you. Um, any other members of the committee, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, do you need a motion to move these items, or no. to accept the item? No, I think it's the same as we presented. Um, we'll do one more round, and then. Yeah, we'll. Yeah, no, we won't need a motion, but we'll. This will all be in the final budget that we'll get. Okay. Um, I would say end of this month, if not the first week of April. I think is we're still on that. Uh, April, May. Yeah, we should be able to. Yeah, basically by that last week of April, that first week of May, we'll be able to approve the well and then we have to have a public hearing in the midst before we yeah. have the final approval we should have the last piece of the budget to you that last week of april when we get back right. from the vacation great great and then we can schedule the public hearing and the final vote from the committee and move it over to the city side and get this this honestly in my six years this is the first time that this, the budget's been done this early i can't believe it uh, I, I know you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> we said that we, we said that last year. Right. And then what happened? Right. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just you know, like I've said before, you know, it, 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 the, those of you who've been on a while recall this usually runs well into August. Oh, Sometimes please. into right. September, we're still uh, you know putting the band-aid yeah. and chewing gum on. So, yeah. um, all right. Any other business for finance? Anyone else have a comment? I know Tom, you're on Zoom. Anything? No? All right. Okay. No, I'm so, oh. Good, thanks. I'm sorry? Uh, I'll just say one thing, Mark, and, and that is, you know, the, um, you know, because the Brockton Public Schools, you know, needs to uh, retool with regard to these uh, positions in order to um, um, answer the state's call and answer, you know, the call of, um, getting our scores up to where we want them to be and need to be that, you know, these are investments, these positions are investments, um, you know, in, in terms of oversight and making sure that the, the curriculum and the product and the teaching and learning that's going on, you know, addresses the, um, you know, the, the state's, uh, report, you know, the, uh, again, the state, um, you know, came into Brockton and, you know, pointed out that, uh, the test scores were not where they should be. And, um, you know, obviously that's, that was a reality due to the budget. Now that the budget uh, is improving through the, the power of uh, you know, the legislature and the advocacy that um, took place, you know, we, we, need to, um, we need to implement these changes in order to get uh, Brockton back to where uh, we know it can be. Uh, you know, we, we have the ability, but we're going to need the, the, the manpower, woman, man and woman power. You know, I use that as a gender neutral term, um, but, um, um, oh boy, talk about political correctness, but okay. Um, <laughs> but we need to get those positions and the supervision and the curriculum up to snuff in order to, uh, you know, improve and the state will be watching. So these are necessary positions. I totally agree with those positions. So that's, that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Minicello, and you make a good point, and I'll, I'll reiterate, um, you know, the guy in the corner office has not exactly been our best friend, so I do want to thank our state delegation, because um, they really have advocated strong for us these last uh, seven or eight years, and, um, you know, they were able to, uh, uh, through that advocacy and through the uh, advocacy that this body and our former and current superintendent and Mr. Petronio have been involved in, um, you know, have been able to turn things around, so, um, all right. So with that, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded by Ms. Asak. I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.